Brad's status is directed and written by Mike White and his stars Ben Stiller and Austin Abrams and this takes a look at the life of a 40 year old man, the founder of a small nonprofit, who is taking his son on a college tour in the East Coast. While at the same time he's going through a midlife crisis contemplating his past and his present and what happened between those times, remembering his friends from college and how different his life is from theirs. I was interested in this movie from the moment I saw the trailer, but what I really loved about this film, and it's my favorite aspect about it, is the way this film deals with the story and the tone in which it takes the story with. This film is surprisingly relaxing in tone. It's a reflective movie, it contemplates serious questions that I think we can all relate to on one level or another, but it's not an overly dramatic film. It's not one of those come sob for one hour and 40 minutes while you watch our main character sob for one hour and 40 minutes. It's surprisingly whimsical and charming in the way it deals with these situations because as soon as Ben Stiller in this film playing Brad starts to contemplate on a more dour and serious note, the movie has a very organic and realistic way of dealing with it. Because his middle life crisis has less to do with relentlessness or lust and more with a dreadful loss of perspective. Brad feels like he has never had a real goal or a real dream he wanted to achieve and just settled for things. And now he sees his son being this music prodigy wanting to get into Harvard and he wants that for him because he doesn't want his son to feel in the future the way he feels now and he wants to be proud of his son. And that aspect of the film I really loved as well because what unfolds because of that is also very interesting and that is the other side of the perspective of his son becoming successful and how he will look towards his father and his mother. The script for this film is extremely clever and surprisingly deep in the way it deals with these questions. Because the film deals with his midlife crisis in such a strong and realistic way, sometimes certain pieces of dialogue and visuals in this film will hit you like an emotion emotional punch to the gut. As well as some other aspects in this film that I personally feel might not hit me as strong right now, I feel that if I watch this movie in my 40s or 50s, I will probably cry as I'm watching this film. And Ben Stiller portrays this character very well. I really, really enjoyed his performance in here. It's probably top five of Ben Stiller performances I have ever seen. He has this very everyman quality in here that he has showcased before, but in here he transmits the vulnerability and really the sourness that this man must feel, but you never feel that he is really bitter about it. He's just unsatisfied. There are two very cathartic scenes in this film. One of them with Michael Sheen who is also very good in the little time he has on screen and that felt incredibly good to see for the sake of Ben Stiller's character in this film. I just felt relieved for him. And another one comes when Ben Stiller sits and talks with one of his son's friends because when he talks to this girl she accuses him of thinking the world was made for himself. That it's a situation of white and man privilege. And she does have a point but so does Brad. His angst is real and it feels real throughout the film. But in the bigger picture it is indeed trivial and at this moment Brad confronts her with other real topics that affect her perspective and so the audience is left to think for ourselves and about ourselves and that is what makes this script shine as well. The direction however could stand out a little more. I felt that at points and for the majority of the film the handheld style really helped in us feeling connected to this character and very close to him in an introspective way that the movie wanted to achieve. While at other points it actually made it feel a little bit more distant. Narration is used a lot in this film and it works for me about 75% of the time because Ben Stiller has his inner monologues from beginning to end and that works but on other times we start seeing him imagining in his friends lives living those dream scenarios like living on an island and being rich and those scenes I could have used without the narration. But besides that, Brad's status is a charming drama that doesn't feel too sour or too serious. It actually has its charming and very heartfelt moments and it balances those heartfelt moments very well indeed with the comedic ones. It brings out great performances from Ben Stiller and Austin Abrams. It's a very, very tight, very well done script and because of that I'm giving it a very, very high martini. It is a good time anytime.
What did you think of Brad's status, my beautiful geekies? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Do you like these kind of reflective movies? And what is your favorite? Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the freaking best. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. For those who've seen it, a Thor Ragnarok spoilers review is on the channel, but I also have a spoilers free one as well. And tomorrow, my geek classic review for Attack of the Clones will come out. I can't wait to see you there. And so until then, you stay beautiful, you stay geeky, and if you haven't done so yet, click the subscribe button and the bell so we can be geeky. United!